we are continuing our series on understanding binary in C-sharp with lesson number nine. In this video, we're gonna learn about the exclusive OR in 10 minutes or less. So I have two values, one and two. We've got those set up to print out to the console for values one and two. I took off a 32, so it's just gonna compare the, um, the standard eight places. So we go, there's our value one, value two. Now, the exclusive OR is a bit different. Now you can say uh, it's, it's written out as XOR. So that's exclusive OR. And the character for the exclusive OR, remember AND is one ampersand, the OR is one pipe character. Well, it is the, um, the up arrow or carrots or whatever you want to call that character right there, but that is going to be the character that, that indicates exclusive or. So an exclusive or is going to be where it says, we're going to do a comparison between two values, value one and value two in this case, and we're going to say that it's only going to be true if only one of the values is true. So one and zero in this place right here, okay, that's gonna result in a one, but one and one, they're both true, therefore, no, it's gonna be a zero. These are both zero, therefore it's a zero. These are both one, so it's a zero. So the exclusive or is gonna give us a um, int result equals val one exclusive or val two. And that's gonna give us this, um, this kind of comparison or join where it says between these two, which one's the ones where only one of the values is one in each position. So let's copy and paste the uh, console right line. We're gonna say uh, result and we'll put result here as well. And we'll see the, the result of this exclusive or, and yes, sure enough, we got one and then three zeros because the only place in which we had a difference, a one and a zero, is in this place right here. Therefore, we only get one and then three zeros afterwards for the results. So that's the exclusive or. Now, let's talk about a couple of times when this is really useful, okay? So what this is gonna do is one of the, va re the values of it is it's going to allow us to very easily compare values. Now, right now we only have four bits in our each value, but imagine we had massive values. We could do exclusive or on the two values and we could see the results. Now, imagine for a minute that we did exclusive or let's just do it a Let's do it again down here, but we're gonna put new values for um, val one and two. Okay, so val one equals uh, zero B one zero zero one one zero zero one, like so. And we're gonna do the same thing for value two. Okay, let's run this again. So we have the result printed out twice here. But notice this result right here is all zeros. What does all zeros indicate? that the two values, value one and value two, were the same value. It's a very quick way to do a comparison to say, yes, these two are the same because we get all zeros when we do exclusive or. All right, if, we, if they were even slightly different, we would get different results. Like for here, we got a different result because that result says, no, there's a value in one of these spots that um, the or found. There's a difference in one of the spots that the or found. So if we have both have ones, then it says zero, but that those two are the same. If we both have zeros, those two are the same, so we get a zero. It's only when there's a difference that it puts a true or a, a one value in that spot. So therefore, that's a really quick way to say, hey, um, these two are different or these two are the same, okay? so. They're the same only if an exclusive or result is zero. Now, here's another thing you can do with exclusive or. Oops, there we go, comment that out. So we have two values and let's make this even easier. We're not gonna use the binary for a minute. We're just gonna say int, uh, or I'm sorry, val one equals five, again, decimal type or decimal 
value, so it's a base 10. And then val2 equals uh, 9. Or let's do 8. Doesn't matter. Okay? So we have these two values. Now, I'm going to give you a um, one of those quiz questions or, you know, tricky hacky questions or, you know, leak coding questions. I want you to put value 2, the 8, into value 1. And I want you to put the value for value 1 of 5 into value 2. But I don't want you to use a third variable. So I want you to swap those two values without using a temporary third value. How would you do that? Well, what we would do is we'd use the exclusive or three times. Okay, so we'd say val1 equals val1 exclusive or val2. And then we do that again, so we copy this. Only this time we're going to put in a value 2. But the same formula, val1 xor or exclusive or value 2. And then we're going to paste it again, this time again, putting it into value 1. So value 1 gets the value of value 1 exclusive or value 2. Then value 2 gets the, the value of value 1 uh, exclusive or value 2. And then value 1 gets the value of value 1 um, exclusive or value 2. Okay. Now notice that every time we do this operation, it's changing with well, this kind of time it changes value 1. And so this, this value 1 is different than the previous one. And then we change value 2 which then changes this operation as well. But let's see the result. So we're going to copy this, and we're going to print out the value 1. Again, so we're only using these two variables. We're not using a third temporary value. So let's what the value of uh, value 1 is, and we'll see what the value of value 2 is. Okay. Um, Actually, you know what? Let's just see the value of value one and value two first, which we used uh, decimal. Oops. There we go. Um, we use decimal values just because I want to show you the, how it works first, and then I'll show you the, um, the binary of it. But let's run this, and we see that value one has eight and value two has five. Remember, it started at five and eight. So we flipped those values. So let's see how this works at every step along the process. I'm going to copy this um, right here. I'm going to paste it in here. And we're going to grab the value of, um, of value 1. And actually, we're going to grab the value of value 1 uh, right here as well. And then right here, we'll grab the value of value 2. OK? so. Let's grab this and we'll grab the value of value two and then we'll grab the value of value one again. And we can, uh, let's just comment this out. Okay, so we're, we're gonna grab the value of value one first when it's five, just to see what five looks like in binary. The same with eight for value two. And then we're going to see what the value of value one is when it changes using the exclusive or. And then again, value two changes and then value one changes. So. Let's look, and we've got, okay, value 1 is 101, and value 2 is 1,000, essentially, or 1,000. So value 1, when we do exclusive or, we see that we get 1,101. All right, that's the new value. We use exclusive or, uh, take that value into exclusive or on value 2, and we get 0,101, which if you are familiar, that looks an awful lot like what value 1 used to be. And we take value uh, 1, we assign a value of value 1 exclusive or value 2, which is this and this, and we get the value of this. And it's a 1, 0, 0, 0, which, if you remember, that's what value 2 was. So, yes, it's complicated. Yes, it's going to burn your brain a little bit. But once you start to practice it and let it click, all of a sudden you've got some really powerful things. We are not re, not creating new va variables and new memory registers in order to do just a, a simple swap of two values. So that's how to work with exclusive OR.